ministry. Amen. And we're going to find out tonight the three major, major focuses to be in every church. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 to 25. We're going to talk about tonight Jesus, Jesus' public ministry. Amen. Now, he's Amen. been through verses chapter 1, 2, 3. Now we're dealing with the end of chapter 4. Amen. Just the last three verses. And believe me, Stan, it's a lot in those last three verses. Amen. And 25. We're going to talk about the main focus, the main focus of what every church should be focused on. If one of these things are missing, you better question if God is in that ministry. Amen? Because a lot of people, what they think it's about, is not about. Amen? But I want to show you tonight what ministry is supposed to be about. Amen? Praise God. All right, saints. I'm going to pick this up. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 to 25. If you're just coming on tonight, God bless you. Welcome to the line. Magnify him. Sound doctrine teaching. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 to 25. And we're about to start on Jesus' public ministry. About to take it to the world. Amen. You ready? Y'all ready? Amen. Well, Amen. Y'all ain't saying that. Y'all ready? Amen. 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 If y'all ready now. You ain't ready. I'm going to wait a minute. But if you're ready, let's go. All right. Amen. Yes. Tonight, y'all coming on in there now. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank Matthew you, Lord. chapter 4, verse 23, 25. Uh, the first thing that we're going to start with is verse 23. And Jesus went about all of Galilee doing what? Teaching. Teaching. See that? Amen. Teaching. Teaching. Jesus went about all of Galilee Doing what? Teaching. He came in their synagogues teaching. First of all, we need to understand that there are three things that show the outright power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So teaching. Now, what's the difference between teaching and preaching? Teaching means an intended for instruction. Now, we don't know what to do unless you be taught. Am I right? If, if, listen, if I don't know nothing about plumbing, I can't come out there and, and grab no monkey wrench and start working. Amen. You can't dig without a shovel. And believe it or not, if you're going to dig, you better know how to handle the shovel. That shelf will wear you out if you don't know how to use it. Oh, yeah. Amen? Amen? So we got to realize something that it started out with teaching. Uh -huh. What's the difference between teaching and preaching? 
Teaching means intended for instruction. Listen to this. Psalm 32 verse 8 said, I will instruct you, come on now, and teach you in the way that you should go. Now, God is going to teach us the way we should go. But you have to realize something, that's instruction. See, we take for granted that when people come to church, they already know some things. But we ought to come to church with the attitude and listen, not that I know everything, but it's something that I need to know. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now you got to realize something. If you ain't listening, you ain't going to learn nothing. Amen. You got to pay attention. Yeah. Praise God. And that means if you're paying attention, that means you're focused. Yeah. Amen? Amen? You're hearing what God has to say. Because the world can't teach you God. <laughs> the world can't teach you God. The only thing the world can do is run you to God. Amen? If you got any sense. You want to go in the opposite direction than the world. Right? Okay. So, teaching is an intricate part of the church. Because remember something. He said, my people perish for the lack of Knowledge. Good morning, Mother Pet. Good morning, Terry. God's people perish for the lack of knowledge. So you got to realize something. It must be something very important that God wants us to know. Am I right? Amen. Now, who pocketbook is that? Me, me. Sister Oh, okay. So you got to realize something. If there's some things that God wants us to know, we got to be listening. Because the world can't teach us what God wants to show us. Amen. So, Terry, you got to realize something. We got to be focused and get that instruction. Amen. Listen, it's how I learned to live for the Lord. I had to sit down and listen. Amen. When I sat down under my pastors, I listened. And there was time that they would pull me to the side if I had questions and would tell me different things. So I understand. Amen. Now my pastor understood that God gave him the revelation that one day I was going to preach. I didn't think I was. I didn't think I could. I didn't even want to. Oh, uh, y'all let me be honest. Amen. I didn't even want to. But somebody saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. Amen. And my pastor didn't just let me go up and start preaching. He started me out teaching. Amen? Amen. Now he started me out teaching. Now, why do you think my pastor started me out teaching? Because you know teaching was an open forum where people would ask me questions. You see? And when they ask me questions, I got to know what I'm talking about because I got to have an answer. And I know some of y'all said the same Tuesday night Bible study. It's some stuff from Tuesday night Bible study. So what I'm saying is I had deacons minister different people that would say what does that mean? What does that mean? And the first time I was so embarrassed Vicky, that I had to go and study harder because I realized something. These people knew a little bit more than I did. Amen. Because they had been in church a long time. And I had to make sure that I had an answer for the things that they would ask me. And if I didn't have an answer, listen, I had to be honest. Y'all let me study and I'll come back and tell you tomorrow. Right. Tell us what I had to do. Because if you don't know, you don't tell somebody something you don't know. And it made me go deeper in the word made me study harder. You see what I'm saying? Because I wanted to be right. Now, let me tell you something. If you want to be right with God, you got to have a teachable spirit. Come on, baby. If you want to be right with God, you got to have a teachable spirit. You got to learn how to sit down 
and absorb this word in your spirit. Because the word of God is instruction. That's what it is. The Bible says, how can a young man find his way? Huh? Through the word of God. Lord have mercy. You got to take on instruction. See, the way that you walk in the word, you read it and you do what it says. It's just that simple. See, God is not going to leave you blind. If it's a situation or something that you're dealing with and you need to get instruction, it's in their Bible somewhere. Amen. That's why they make promise books, Mother Pettiford. Uh -huh. Promise books, Mother Annie. Uh -huh. So we can read the promise and know that's for us. Uh -huh. You see? Yeah. So we can overcome every situation that come our way. This is good teaching this morning. Amen? Amen. So you got to realize something that teaching is the foundation of every single ministry. Jesus didn't come preaching. No. What did he do first? He taught. Now we live in a world today where preaching is what's popular. I understand. Because teaching don't get nobody no check. You say, no. Amen. Amen. See. So you got every so many people that they just want to go right on to the preaching. But you have to realize something. The foundation of any ministry is his teaching. Now you can tell the growth of the ministry not by how many people show up on Sunday morning, but how many people you got on Bible study on Tuesday. Because see, he said those that hunger and thirst after the work, they shall be filled, right? So you got people that are tuning in on Tuesday. See, see, they, they're not worried about what you got on. They're not thinking about how good you look. They're not thinking about the lights and the music and, and, and the hooping. They, they're not interested in that. When they call it on Tuesday, they are strictly there to hear the word of God. Because that's all you're going to get. You can't even see me. I mean, I'm teaching Bible study in my work boots. Dirty shirt, pants, raggedy. And the dump. Ain't nobody coming out to the dump to hear me teach. Amen. But it's that word that goes forth. All right, all right, all right. See, that word, word is coming in your ear. Oh, yeah. Coming down through your heart. Uh -huh. Penetrating your soul. Amen. Making you feel something on the inside. Come on. That's moving. Make you want to do right. Come on, somebody. Amen. When you get that teaching, now that thing make you want to do right. Or it may not be a lot of us this morning, but I'm feeling that thing already. Amen. See that good teaching, man. Uh -huh. Anchors. Uh -huh. See, and you, 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 you had the biggest ocean liner, cruise liner in the world. Uh -huh. Long as Granville Street. Oh, yeah. A thousand rooms, 2,500 rooms. Uh -huh. I don't care how big it is. Uh -huh. If it ain't got an anchor, it's going to drift. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Yes. Amen. Teaching is your anchor. Uh -huh. That's your anchor. Yes, yes. And no matter how big you get, how far you go, you better not get away from your teaching. Because uh -huh. you get away from your teaching, you're going to drift. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Am I right about it? Amen. Don't make a difference if it's a power boat. Come on, somebody. Ocean liner, fishing boat, pantoon. If it ain't anchored, it's going to drift. Amen. You know, I'm kind of liking it this morning. Amen. <laughs> I believe I got the real people in here today. I want you to realize something. That's your anchor. Now, if you don't connect yourself with real teaching, you will always just be religious. Come on, Sam. Think of Tracy, I promise you, if you don't get teaching, you will always be just religious. You will have a form of godliness. 
You're going to look Christian, talk Christian, uh -huh. dance Christian, uh -huh. shout Christian, uh -huh. run Christian. Uh -huh. But you're not going to be a solid Christian. Uh -huh. all right, all right. See, what you're going to wind up doing is mimicking what everybody else do. So the devil don't care how high you jump. Come on, somebody. He just don't want you to stay. So today we got a lot of people that's running, jumping, shouting, howling, hooping. But when the devil hit them with a real blow, knock them to the knees. And they can't handle it. They ready to jump out of women, commit suicide, and leave the church. You know why? Because they don't have no anchor. Amen. Right. See, when the enemy come at you, you got to have the word. Yeah, yeah. When the enemy came at Jesus, what did Jesus give him? Even though he was God manifesting the flesh, he gave the devil what he did not want. That was the word. Amen. And the Bible said that when he came to him and he was trying to tempt him and he said, turn these, huh, these rocks in the bread. He said, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that what? But see the body of the mouth of God. See, the devil couldn't do nothing with that word. Amen. Now, you sitting up there talking about, I don't feel like doing it today. He had told your head all the pieces. The only thing, you listen to me, the only thing, Terry, that put the devil on the run is the word. Come on now. My Bible tell me that demons tremble at what? The word of God. They don't tremble at, at me. They don't tremble at you. They tremble at the word of God. Come on, man. And when you got that word, you got you are armed and dangerous. See, this is the reason why we got to get to the point in our lives. Well, we put the word above everything. You got to put the word above the pretty church. The word above the preacher. The word above the music. The word above the money. The word above your car. The word above everything. Listen, the word of God needs to be above everything in your life. Because let me tell you something. Maybe everything else in your life is going to pass away standing. He said, but what? His word will never. Oh my God, I wish I had a Bible reader in here. Amen. See, when you got the word, you got something to stand on. You ain't got no word, you ain't got nothing to stand on. Amen. All right. Listen. He gave us that promise in Psalm 32, verse 8. So I will instruct you, I will teach you in the way that you should go. I will counsel you and I'll watch over you. Now he said that he's going to, listen, he's going to watch over us. Good morning, Dean. How you doing? Good morning, Jackie. How y'all? Come on in. He said that he's going to teach us and then it's going to be counsel over us. What are you talking about, Pastor? Listen, not only will he give you and teach you the word, he said, I'm going to be over you, Mother Brethren, so I can see that word begin to live in your life, and I'm going to counsel you on the way to follow it. Yeah. Come on, Deacon Brethren. Come on now. Amen. I'm in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, 24, and 25. That's where I'm at. He said, what I'm going to do? He said, I'm going to give you the word. He said, then I'm going to watch over you to help you to walk in that word, Jackie. Amen. See? Because I'm going to help you make the applications that you need to make in the word. Amen. See, it's hard for me sometimes to make the application. I got to trust God to make the application. Oh, that's right. And the Bible said that thou shalt not lie. Now, I may love the lie. Been lying all my life. <laughs> I wish I had some real people in here, man. Been lying your whole life. And now all of a sudden you get to church and they call the church and the word of God say that you shouldn't lie. Uh, now, you know what the word say, but don't you need the Holy Ghost to help you to stop lying? Amen. 
If you didn't say that man, you lied now. <laughs> Praise God. You've been stealing all your life. Come on now. Listen to Pastor. You've been stealing all your life. And you get in the Lord, you get in the church. And the Bible said, Thou shalt not steal. You gotta realize something. If you've been stealing all your life, listen, you come to church and start stealing. Yes, you will. But guess what? Guess what? When you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will help you not to steal. Come on, give God the praise. Come on now. Hey, Mother Church, how you doing out of state? Y'all come on in here. I'm in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, 24, and 25. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now listen. Jesus came. This is Jesus' earthly ministry. This is what he did. Every church needs to do the same thing what Jesus did. Look what it says here. Matthew 4, verse 23 said, And Jesus went about Galilee teaching in their synagogue. See, God want to teach right in here, right where you are, right in your ear. He didn't say he came preach. He said he went in their synagogues and he started teaching. Why? Because the people needed some teaching. And you need teaching is the foundation. Now, some people don't want to teach because preaching what give them the money, what get them the dollars, what get people excited. But you can get excited as you want. But if you don't have that word of God to ground you, let me tell you something, the devil going to knock your head off. Because long after the preacher's gone, he done got his car, went down the road, sitting down there in, 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 in Butler and true soul. Eating good. Here comes the devil. Come on now. Here he come. Huh? And if you got the word, it don't matter if he's in the church or not. You got the word in you. And let me tell you something. When the devil comes after you, you got something to put him on the run. That's why he can't teach. Listen, the number one thing in this ministry is the teaching. It's the teaching. Lord have mercy. I love to teach. I love to teach more than anything. Else. This is what I love to do is teach. Teach it in their synagogue. And that's Psalm 32 verse 8 said, I will instruct you. Listen, do you not know this is what God is telling you? God is telling you, I will instruct you. That means you're teaching, even though I might be standing up here as the vessel, as the human, as the person before you. Baby, it's all God. Amen. Are you listening to me? See, we can't take no glory. We can't take no credit. That's what God tells us to do. Because God will not dwell in an unclean vessel and God will not share his glory with nobody. So when I stand up here, you better believe I'm standing behind the cross. Amen. It's all about God. So you got to realize something. If God says in Psalm 32 that I will instruct you, he's telling us that he's going to teach us. Come on, somebody. And he said, after I teach you, I'm going to counsel you. Because like I said, you've been lying all your life, and you get to church, you get born again, you read the scripture, say, thou shalt not lie, and you used to lie, you're going to want to lie, but the Holy Ghost going to have to counsel you not to lie. He got to tell you don't say that. He got to convict you don't do that. If you've been a fornicator all your life, sleeping around, time the in Harry, in Harry. <laughs> Come on, Nick Michelle, I'm teaching now. And you know that that spirit of lust is all over you. Huh? I mean, you just love to do the wild thing. Can't help yourself. Huh? Listen, when you hear that word that thou shalt not commit adultery, you got to realize something that the Holy Spirit runs right along from you and tell you that God don't like that. And God gave you the strength not to be fornicating. It's, it's got to come from the Holy Ghost. But you got to take in the word first. Man. See, let me go here. And it comes a time, Mother Patricia. Listen to Pastor. It comes
comes a time in your life where you're supposed to get the word. Now, okay, let me go here. Let me see. I was saying, you my daughter. Don't even go there. I know. And I done taught Irstein how to drive. I done took her out. I done showed her how to use a turn signal, the brake, how to steer, stop sign, left turn, right turn. I done told you all about safety and everything. I done took my time every day. Take you out driving every day. Do you not know I expect you to get your damn learner's permit and drive on your own? Yeah. Are y'all listening to what I'm trying to say? Yeah. See, it come a time in your life when you're going to get behind the wheel and drive. Because right. 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 I can't drive this one. I don't trust you. I just bought your car. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. See, it's going to come a time in your life when this word is going to have to be a part of your life. Yeah. You understand, Dick? And you're going to be held accountable for what you know. Uh, now, don't blame it on pastor. If you don't do what the word says, and you've been sitting in church as long as you've been here, because you ought to know by now. And that's the reason why God takes the load off me. Put it on you. He done passed it on. Watch this here. He said, and preaching. So now teaching is instruction, right? Can I get an amen? Yeah. Okay. It comes a time when you ought to get this instruction. Listen, you ought to be able to accept it. You ought to be able to pass it on. You ought to be able to tell your children what you learn. All right? I'm going to show you something about teaching that you've probably never seen before. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Go to Ephesians chapter 4 right quick. I want to show you something. How important teaching is. And I'm going to show you just how far some people are from sound teaching. It's going to blow your mind when I'm getting ready to show you. But I'm going to show you. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Now you only know this if you've been taught. You do not know this if you ain't been taught. I'm going to show you something. Dear. Ephesians chapter 4. Watch what he said. Y'all there say amen. amen. Now if you're still in Matthew, come on now. <laughs> Stop playing. Alright, Ephesians chapter 4. Look what it said. And he gave some, you see that? Who get who who is this he gave some? This is what Jesus gave. That he is Jesus. Uh -huh. So let's read it. Later. Jesus gave some apostles. Uh -huh. Not everybody's apostles. Some. Uh -huh. He gave some prophets. Okay. Uh -huh. So now you got apostles. Prophets. He gave some evangelists. Uh -huh. I'm in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Evangelists. Uh -huh. And some Pastors and teachers. Do you see the word and? If you see the word and, raise your hand. Amen. I'm going to teach you something. Uh -huh. All my church going life, uh -huh. I've been hearing people talk about the fivefold ministry. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. They say pastors, teachers, no, I'm sorry, apostles, uh -huh. prophets, evangelists. Huh? Come on now. Uh, Teachers and pastors, right? Uh, but they, all of these people that have been telling me this my whole life, must have never really studied. You know why? It's not a five-four ministry. It's a four-four ministry. Pastor, what do you mean a four-four ministry? Because a pastor and a teacher is a shepherd. Amen. They both the same thing. What is a shepherd that don't teach? Now you tell pastor this. What is a shepherd that don't teach? You know what's going to happen? The sheep going to die. If that shepherd don't teach, the sheep is going to die. If a shepherd don't feed them sheep, if he don't graze them where he should be grazing them, making sure that they're taken care of, you know what's going to happen? They're going to die. So a pastor and a teacher is both a shepherd. So it's not a five-fold ministry because if you study the Greek, you find out 
that pastor and teacher are one. Amen. Now, that leads me to understand that there's some people that are talking loud but really don't know what they're talking about. And maybe that's why we got so many people, Brother Stan, that's geared toward preaching. Because preaching will get you a check. Teaching will get you a blessing. You understand? Because when God's people understand what to do and how to do, and God is using you, you ain't got to worry about money. Money don't come. You understand? That going to supply all your needs according to church, which is in growing Christ. But if you think you're going to be wealthy and the sheep going to die, you's a lie. You better be teaching just as hard as you preaching. Come on in here. Amen. Watch this. Let's go back to Matthew now. Go on back to Matthew. All right. So now we just found out that it's not a five-fold ministry. It's a four-fold ministry. Isn't that right? Yeah. And he feeds the flock by teaching and preaching. A shepherd that don't feed is going to kill the sheep sooner or later. Now, preaching is popular, I must say, but teaching is not that popular. I want you to look at Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. I want you to see what teaching is. Let me give you a scripture. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. Nehemiah 8 8. If anybody ever asks you what is teaching, you tell them Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8, Jonathan. Nehemiah 8 8. Now let me tell you what Nehemiah 8 8 say, Mother Patricia. Listen to me. Here is a perfect 8 explanation of what teaching really, really is. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 8. When you get there, say amen. It says, they read from the book of the law. Teaching, you got to go to the book. Making it clear. You see that? They went to the book of the law. Then what did they do, Mother Annie? They made it clear and given the meaning, I just gave you the meaning of the teaching, didn't I give it to you? Amen. So that the people could understand what was being read. Good God of money. That's it. That's what teaching is. That you go to the book. You explain it so the people can understand what So if anybody ever asks you, well, what is teaching? Say, Pastor, he told us what it is. It's Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8. Go read it yourself, sir, and you'll find out. Now, preaching is proclaiming. That's different. Preaching is proclaiming. Proclaiming. You can proclaim all you want, but if they don't know how to do it, you're just proclaiming in vain. If I sit here and I say, okay, ladies, I want you to learn how to trust in the Lord with all your heart. The first thing you're going to say, well, how do I get to the point where I learn how to trust? I tell you, okay, listen, you got to uphold the word of God and live it. You say, well, pastor, how do I live? I say, listen, you got to live by faith. Now, one of these ladies is going to say, well, how do I live by faith? And I have to tell you how you live by faith. When we tell all of y'all how you live by faith, Amen. I'm going to show you how to live by faith. You read the word and do what it says. Amen. And don't let nothing turn you around. Ain't that simple? So now you know how do you live by faith. You read the word, do what it says, just that simple. Nothing added, nothing less. You ain't got to read a hundred books. Just read the word and do exactly what it says. And if you read the word and do what it say, you're going to be walking by faith. Somebody clap your hands and say amen in here. Watch it now. We get somewhere now. Listen. And you have to realize something when there's proclaiming, you declare, you're encouraging people. I'm encouraging you, listen, to be diligent in your life. But how can you do it? If you don't know how, you can't. You can't. Listen. He taught, Jesus taught 
taught so people could understand. He preached so people would be committed. Talk to you. He taught so people could understand. But the preaching is so people would be committed. You understand? See, when that preaching comes, it encourages you to do what the word says. It encourages you in a real upfront and personal way to live out what's been taught. See, I'm encouraging you. Come on, Deacon Michelle. You can do it. Come on, Deacon Patterson. You can do it. Listen, I'm only doing what God say heaven is doing. Amen. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? The Bible says, listen at this. The Bible says that you are encompassed with a great cloud of witnesses. What are they doing? Encourage you every day. Come on, Jack. You can do it, baby. They sitting up there right now saying, come on, Pastor E, you teach, you giving it to them straight. That's what they need to know. See, I got a whole host of heaven saying that sitting up there right now saying, go, Emmett, go, go, Emmett, go. Don't turn around. Keep on teaching. Keep on preaching. Give them the word. And we're going to all go home together one day. Somebody clap your hands and say amen. Devil starting to pull you back more. Amen. You start, listen, let me tell you something. If you start going slow, hey, listen, how many of y'all know you go slow long enough, you're going to sit down? Amen. Amen. See, that's why the word of God says, don't lack no zeal. You're supposed to be on fire for God. Let me tell you something. God did not die for you to die. He died so you can somebody clap me. He died for so you to live. You're supposed to keep your fire. And listen, if you can't keep your fire, you know what that means? You might not have had a fire to begin with. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Watch this. And then he says, what was he preaching? The gospel of the kingdom. That's why you see the only thing I talk about right here in this book. Fair in the book I ain't talking about. Let me tell you something. The three things that make a ministry is preaching, teaching, and healing. It's not the ushers. It's not the video ministry. It's not the music ministry. It's not the choir. You didn't see nowhere here when Jesus came singing, ushering. Come on now. Administration. I talked to all y'all. Amen. He didn't come doing nothing. What did he come doing? Teaching, preaching, and healing. Let me tell you something. If you ain't got nothing but that, you better be glad. Because it's a huh, Come on in now. Because let me tell you something. That's the sign. That's the hallmark of God being in the church. If you're in a church and ain't no healing, God ain't in there. Are you kidding me? The Bible said that they brought all people from everywhere and he healed every last one of them. Some of y'all sitting here right now, God done healed you. Amen. You're acting funny. All right. You better be careful. Because let me tell you something, he may have to heal you again. Amen. Amen. You know what? <laughs> let me tell you something. If God done healed you, and God done done a miracle in your life, All right. don't get to be so such and much. That you think that you are greater now. Amen. You think you are right. You can do what you want to do. Let me tell you something. You better stay on that line. Because you never know. Let me tell you something. That cancer might be a remission. But God knows when it comes back. If you start acting up on God. You go a different direction. I guarantee you all hell going to break out your life. I didn't tell you about the time I started to stop preaching. That didn't last long. Sure didn't. I said, God, I just can't do this like this. This is, you know, God is tearing me up. I'm giving everything I know. And I'm 
getting little. Not getting no respect. You understand? Listen. People don't listen. And you know what God told me? Say, go anyway. <laughs> Do you not know God ain't trying to hear your excuses? Amen. Do you not know the Bible said the gifts and the call of God are without repentance? I can't repent and don't preach. What do you think I'm going to... Oh, Lord, come on. Listen, Deacon, but Jack, you can't tell God, well, I don't want to be a deacon no more. God said, what? That's the reason why you're living. Amen. You better come on in here now. The reason why you're a mother is the reason why you're living. To be a mother of the church. It's the reason why you're living to be a deacon of the church. It's the reason why you're living to be a musician. Uh -huh. It's the reason why you're living to usher. Uh -huh. If you ever get to the point where you don't want to do anything for God, what makes you think God want to do anything for you? Amen. You better think about it. Amen. You better think hard. Yeah, I know it's just life-changing church. But I'm telling you, don't lose your zeal and your fervor. Oh, where's that in the Bible? Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Amen. Romans 12, verse 11 said, never lack zeal. Amen. But keep your spiritual fervor. Doing what? Serving the Lord. Amen. Good God Almighty, I feel good this morning. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk about the healing. Watch this here. And then he said right here in Matthew chapter 4 verse 23, healing all men of sickness and all men of disease among the people. You see that? See, healing is the third thing that Jesus did in his earthly ministry. Now, all you got to do to know if Jesus is really in your church is ask this one question. Everybody listen. How many people in here been healed since you've been in Magnify? Amen. Uh oh. Okay. He's here. Clap your hands. <laughs> you might as well clap your hands. Because see, you got to realize something. Healing is a part of the ministry. Healing is a part of the Oh, God. Healing is a part of Jesus' earthly ministry, y'all. Let me tell you something. If it ain't no healing going on, God ain't in there. I'm telling you right now. You got some people been in church all their life. They just go to church, go to church, go to church, go to church. And they go to church and they don't see no healing. They don't see no miracles. They don't see no turnarounds. They don't see, listen, they don't see none of it. But yet and still, they think they in God's house. But in God's house is a house of prayer. And in God's house it's a house of healing. Can I get a witness? Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And verse 24 said, look what it said. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers diseases and torments. Now, let me tell you something. This is the first time in the Bible you ever see demonic activity. In the New Testament. Because he said people that are tormented. Let me tell you something. The devil is a tormentor. Let me tell you something. He'll shoot thoughts in your mind all the time. He'll, listen, what I tell you the other week, 90% of the things that you worry about don't never happen, Mother Pepper. They never happen. Why? What is he trying to do? He's messing with your head. He's messing with your mind. Are you listening to me? And you have to realize this. The devil is a tormentor, but you can put the devil on the run. Are you listening to me? You got power over serpents and scorpions and all the evil works of darkness. And the Bible said, by no means will they hurt you. Come on, somebody. You got to realize something that by his strength you're already hit. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Amen. Look what it said. And those who were possessed with devil. And those who were unity, lunatics. Now, 
and those that had palsy, and he healed them. Now, listen. So this is the first place in the Bible that you see demonic activity, right? In the New Testament now. All right, now listen. I want y'all to get this here. Watch this. When he talks about people that were lunatics, now I'm going to teach. I want you to listen good. Listen good, now. Listen. First of all, I want you to realize something, that the word lunatic comes from the word lunar. 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 All right, watch this. Everything that pertains to the devil in the Bible deals with darkness, right? He's the prince of the power of the air. He's the prince of darkness. Every prophecy that deals with the devil is dealing with the moon. Darkness. Every prophecy that deals with Jesus deals with the sun. Alright? Okay, watch this. So now, listen. When someone is in an insane asylum and they're a lunatic, you have to realize something that the base of that word lunatic is Lucifer. <laughs> it's Lucifer. Do you remember when the disciples came and the disciples brought this man that was totally consumed by the devil? And the disciples could not cast that demon out. How is anybody the word? Anybody hear what I'm talking about? Remember, they said, Jesus, we couldn't cast this demon out. What did he say? How long will I have to suffer you? Huh? See? And Jesus came and cast that devil out. Right? When somebody is a lunatic, they are totally consumed with Lucifer's spirit. Their mind has been confiscated by the devil. That's why they're in the crazy house. Because they're totally consumed by the devil. Are you listening to me? So, Jesus says that these only come out by what? Fasting and prayer. Come on, pastor. There you go. I'm over here. All right? in their whole entire life. They couldn't do it. They went everywhere and couldn't find no healing. You look at all the people. What about, listen, what about the man that sat by the pool of Bethesda? All of them years. Right? He had a superstition but didn't have a word. God with me. 
I could have been dead lying in my grave, but I'm still here. Do you know how many people grown with me been there a long time ago? Been there and gone stinking. But I'm still here. You know why? Because I'm trusting in the Lord. And I am in a ministry that God will heal me. God will deliver me. God will make a way for me. I have seen it so many times before. Girl went in for a cancer treatment. Called me up crying. Pass. God didn't heal me. They can't find a trace in my body. She said, Pastor, I'm so grateful. So grateful. You know, when 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 you got a family member, paraplegic, you the only one that's doing the cooking. Come on, Terry. You're the only one that's making sure that they get back and forth to the bathroom, up and down the steps. You're the only one that's in there switching in the kitchen every day to make sure your brother good. Come on, I'm in your business. I'm down your road. I'm in your house. Amen. You know that you are all they got. And then they tell you, you get ready to have. You might die. Let me tell you something I was saying. <laughs> if this anything make you run to the Lord. Because see, I'm not only concerned about myself. I'm concerned about my brother. Come on somebody. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I'm concerned about my sister. How they gonna make it without me? Come on now. But God said, not so. Huh? God said, I'm gonna heal you. You know why I'm gonna heal you? Because you are serving. Come on, somebody. Anybody here to serve the Lord? Hallelujah. Praise God. God will heal you if you serve. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I know it's just like changing church, but I just want to talk to somebody. Look at verse 25. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm teaching you what's supposed to go on in the church. And there followed him a great multitude of people from Galilee. From the Decapolis. <laughs> wow. And from Jerusalem. And from Judea. And beyond the Jordan. See, what I want you to realize something is that Jesus really don't want any of us sick. And his healing ministry was the evidence that he was real. He taught so nobody would be ignorant. Let me tell you something. If you go to church and you're ignorant, all you are is religious. You don't have no foundation. Let me tell you something. When the dam break, <laughs> you better know God for yourself. I ain't talking about what the pastor said. You better know God for yourself. When you can ready to go up under the night, you better be able to say, Lord, I will live and not die and proclaim the word to the Lord. For God, it ain't about pastor, it ain't about magnify him. It's about me and you, and I need you now. Can I get a witness? Amen. You better ask God to strengthen your hand. When you see the word that says strengthen your hand, that means God give me the strength to be able to handle what's about to come my way. And as I fall off under the anesthesia, I'm dreaming about God delivering. When I wake up, I'm going to give him the praise. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'll make it through the night. Come on now. I might wake up on the hospital bed and I'm out of my mind and my wife might be by my side. Some of y'all might be by my side. And I may not get all my thoughts together until the next day. But you better believe there's something going on on the inside of me. Let's give it God the praise. Yeah. You don't mind, I just <laughs> thank you, Carlos. Preaching is to strengthen your confidence and your commitment. Healing was proof of the ministry. But healing was his proof. Look at John 14, verse 11, right quick. And I'm gonna leave y'all alone. 
We're going to take up this offering. Amen. Amen. We're going to get on into our regular service. And we're going to let our minister of music take over here. Praise God. And we're going to keep it moving right on through the service. Amen. Amen. Somebody get John for me. What did I say? John what? 14. John 14 verse 11. John 14 verse 11. John 14 and verse 11. Yeah. Ain't he all right? Amen. Ain't this good teaching? Amen. 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 I tell you what, you leave out a life changing church, make you feel like you go to hell, put the fire with a water pistol. Amen. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. John chapter 14, verse 11. I'm still turning pages. I ain't perfect. 14, verse 11. Look what he says here. I'm going to finish up on this. I said it, mother, but I'm going to bring it back because I want y'all to read it. John 14, verse 11. What does he say? He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else. Did you see that or else? Y'all yeah, got that? See that? See that? Bill? See it say or else? Or else what? Believe me for the very work's sake. Ain't that real? Yeah, really, yeah. See? He said, believe me for the very work's sake. Believe me for the things I do. Praise God. Believe me for the healing. Can I tell y'all something that you may not know? Can't nobody heal but God. Amen. Can't nobody heal but God. I know you think your doctor can heal. I know you think that, come on now. I know you think they can. But your doctor can't heal. The only one can heal is Jesus. 